Hey everyone, I'm Meredith Besh and I am the CEO of Pausebox. I help women uh, reconnect to their power through intentional pause. Today I'm going to teach you how to set powerful intentions to create the life you love. So I have three tips. The first is, what's an intention and where do I start? So one of my favorite teachers, Danielle Laporte, calls intentions goals with soul. And she says, once you get clear on how you want to feel, it's much easier to make choices that align with that clarity. So for her, it's about finding feeling. Find the feeling first. So take a look at your goals and see what feeling is motivating them. Goals are future looking, but intentions exist in the present moment and are amplified with feeling. So here's a five-step process for setting a powerful intention. Um, think of a goal you'd like to have. Uh, as a, a busy mom and entrepreneur, my goal would be I'd like to have more time for me. Maybe you can relate to that. Um, identify the feeling that's motivating that goal. So I want to feel rested and centered. Declare your feeling, intention, and um, in writing. So it could be written out as I take time for myself or I feel rested and centered as I take time for myself, or simply I'm rested and centered. And that is the intentional mantra that you'll um, repeat, declare, write down, and it will keep it front of mind. Um, you definitely get bonus points if you say it out loud. So um, the fourth step is to expect what you're expecting to show up. So really look for times when you feel rested and centered or times when you feel like you have more time for you. So even in the smallest ways, and this is very important because it always starts out in really small ways. Um, for example, you may not be able to take a whole day off initially, um, though I recommend that you do and we can talk about that later. Um, but you might notice that uh, a small opening opened up in your calendar because of a, a canceled appointment or a rescheduled meeting. And you can absolutely revel in that newfound time and use it to um, celebrate how your intention has shown up, right? Now you have time to feel um, rested and centered. So appreciate all the ways, and this is number five, appreciate all the ways your intention and feeling show up in your life because um, you receive them as the gift and you take note and you appreciate them. And it really truly is your creative power at work. Um, my other favorite author, Lynn Twist, says, what you appreciate, appreciates. And I love that adage when it comes to an intention. It's not a set it and forget it. It's a um, set it and then really look around with quite a happy expectancy that it's going to show up. So tip number two is that sometimes our intention hides within it some negative energy. And um, so we want to ensure that our intention is pure and more likely to have the effect that we're looking for. So I answer these questions when I go through an intention. Is there a grasping quality to it? Um, do I feel desperate? Remember, the energy that you're in when you set the intention um, is extremely important. That really is the soil for that seed. So you want it very nourishing whenever possible. Set an intention from a grounded and grateful place. Uh, tip number um, two, which is still around this hidden energy, are you being overly prescriptive about the outcome and maybe so specific that you're limiting yourself? If so, you need to let go of the detail. Um, this is for all the control freaks out there who uh, I very much identify with. It's about um, setting an intention for the energy, for the um, feeling, but it's not about a prescription of how you're going to get there and all the detailed steps. That's uh, a different um, assignment and it's not part of an intention. So is your intention motivated by fear? This is kind of the last uh, thing you want to think about when you set your intention. Are you trying to avoid something or are you actually um, moving toward love? Are you, are you wanting more of something? So I know from my own experience that love amplifies and then fear constricts. So you're going to want to make sure this intention is coming out of a place for love of something. You're going to be wanting to move toward something rather than moving away. 
So make sure you reframe the intention to take advantage of that positive, loving energy. So um, last tip, uh, last tip, <laughs> how intention plus attention equals magic. And um, this is so important because what we pay attention to uh, grows, right? Our energy flows where our attention goes, and we don't know what we don't notice. So once you've released your intention, your job is to pay attention to all the ways it's showing up. Um, sustain it, this intention, by noticing and celebrating those small coincidences and expressions of the feeling connected to your intention. Remember how I said in step one, um, you know, a canceled meeting is possibly a huge call for celebration because you're receiving exactly that little space of time that you asked for. And um, a turbo tip I like to do is I have an actual journal that I keep just for writing down all the ways my intention is showing up. I notice it, I name it, I appreciate each occurrence, and um, it helps me stay happily expectant and looking forward to the next gift. And it also keeps my intention front of mind, so I don't forget that it's actually something that I'm powerfully creating. So those are the three tips. Um, I have a bonus tip, and I want to share that with you right now. So my bonus tip is keep it visual. A lot of times we think of intentions as just um, writing down in, in a journal, and that is powerful, and it is fine. But if you really want to play with sort of turbocharging your intentions, I like to bring in the visual aspect. And um, you've heard that the picture is worth a thousand words. And have you ever stopped to think why? Well, it's because 90% of information transmitted to our brain is visual. And visuals are processed by the brain at 60,000 times the speed of text. So when it comes to setting intentions, um, why does this matter? Well, visuals elicit emotions, which are essential components to intention. So remember talking about feeling in step one? That feeling is what's a really powerful uh, vehicle for your intention. And visuals tend to have a lot of feeling energy. So um, I wanted to just take a quick second and introduce you to a system that I use, which is called an altar card. And it helps you supercharge your intentions by plugging into that feeling energy through visuals. Um, so I select a card each day that speaks to me and then I match it with the feeling or intention. So I have, for example, um, if you can see this, this is one of my altar cards. It's a seedling altar card. And on the back, I had written a intention at the time. What was important for me was feeling confident. So what I do is I set this um, in my uh, in plain view, so for me it's on my desk, and it's in a prominent place, and I'm, I sort of reconnect with that visual, and um, it's interesting, it, it, uh, it telegraphs different things on different days, so on one day this seedling is all about new beginnings, and it's a very optimistic seedling, and on another day when I might be feeling like things aren't going fast enough, and I'm not growing fast enough, and wouldn't it be better if I'm was you know this or that I look at my seedling and I realize you know to um, stay the course to not rush to honor the natural progression of things um, and then it was interesting with this one I turned it around and saw the word confident and I said um, on this particular day what would it feel like if I felt confident in this particular decision so it reminded me to kind of put on those feelings and feelings really do um, help us create our experience, our next chapter. So um, that's the altar card, and um, I want to give you a quick little um, tour of what it comes in. If you can see this, this is um, the pause box, and it's um, mailed to you. This is a starter kit, and it has lots of goodies inside it, including the cards and um, some sensory ritualistic items. Um, but what's powerful about this is it's kind of like a intentional retreat delivered to your door. So the idea is that these altar cards 
um, are a tool for you to use daily, weekly, and they'll come in the mail monthly to you for six months to really remind you to step back, tune in, um, take stock, and get intentional about how you want to be living your life and what you want to create in your life. Uh, I know that with these um, altar cards, uh, using these tools, I've improved kind of my focus and commitment to what matters to me. I have more energy and excitement about my life um, and what I'm creating, because it's right there, front and center. Uh, it does activate that inner guidance. You know, I get input from the visuals to help me sort of um, work through questions I might have or maybe some blind spots that I might not be aware that I'm operating in. It um, obviously creates a ritual for self-care and it's incredibly doable. Um, so this is not something that you have to force yourself to do and sit and, you know, not think. Um, this is an incredibly creative experience. It uh, helps open you up to receiving all the resources, right? And by definition, as you learned today, you're looking expectantly for um, wonderful things to happen and they, they come, they do, they show up. Um, and it's how you love and appreciate your own path because you are um, living it and noticing it and appreciating it and being grateful for it and really starting to live intentionally with clarity and on purpose. So um, I'm hoping that today's video and um, tips about setting intentions has motivated you to um, pause with intention in whatever way that works for you. I obviously would love to invite you to take part of the pause box altar cards. Um, you can learn more about that on my website. It's at shoppauseboxco.com. And this month only, we're doing a two for one. So um, in honor of all the besties out there, if you want to grab a box and um, share one with a friend, uh, I'm happy to give that to you for the price of one. So thanks for your attention. As always, let me know um, what questions you have and how I can be of help uh, in, in an intentional pause. Thanks, guys.